Thank you, Chris. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Namaste Village. And I'm very excited because we have a very special week. We have a week with Reverend Johannes, who is the resident unity minister at Namaste Village and a long time um, sister of the spirit to all of us. Welcome, Johannes. So Johannes is taking us on a one week adventure starting today into the very life flow principles of unity. And I don't know anyone that can be a messenger and deliver the experience better than you can, dear, dear Johannes, welcome. And we turn the whole week over to you gratefully. And we thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm very excited to be here because actually, here was where everything started. I remember the time when my husband and I, we came here to visit Namaste, a village invited by James, and <laughs> we were supposed to be here for one week, you know, eight days. I was teaching, do you remember, guys? I was teaching salsa uh, classes. I was doing morning sessions with James. Uh, I was teaching meditation at the three days here in this beautiful community, in this beautiful town, in this, with these lovely, awesome, holy people. My husband says, why don't we move here? Actually, he said, why aren't we living here? I said, so, and that's how then we met with uh, James and all the idea of unity starts. So we are very grateful to our brother James Twyman because he really was the one. Jack says he enamored us. Seduced. Seduced yeah. us. <laughs> and we are very grateful, my husband and I, are so happy here, so excited, the, the, the community, the people, the ministry, everything is great. So this today, well, thanks, Jane, for your support and love. And this week, we are going to study, but really, it, it's a book called Lessons in Truth. Now, it takes that I have a class in le for Lessons in Truth, which is seven weeks class and work. So this week I'm going to talk lightly about Lessons in Truth, so that you have an idea and a, a, it's, it's great when I talk to James because the prayer chaplains uh, are supposed to take this class and I say, well, why don't I do it through the morning session? And then we can, we can cover uh, some of the spiritual teachings in this book. Lessons in Truth is um, a, written by Emily Cady in 1896. And this, this was a time that nobody talked like we do now openly about all these spiritual concepts and things. Everybody was quiet. These, these are not new things. But at that time, really few people talked so openly like Emily Cady did. Um, and this is one of the foundational tests in the New Thought uh, teachings. Um, new thought movement, especially and unity. Actually, Lessons in Truth was the first textbook in unity, in unity school. So it's really big uh, in, in the unity and it's like basic teachings, really basic. The book explores metaphysical principles and Christian mysticism. Really is, I mean, it's like a, it's a Christian terminology, but it explores the mysticism within the, within the, the 
Christian, Christianity. It focuses on individual empowerment through spiritual understanding. It's about taking responsibility for your life, for your uh, spiritual stuff. Nobody's fault, it's nobody's fault of anything. It's individual empowerment through spiritual understanding. Um, but before continuing about lessons in truth, I, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the author, Emily Cady, because Emily Cady, she was born in 1848 and transitioned in 1941. And she was, again, at that time, an influential figure in the New Thought movement. She was an homeopathic physician when there were no women <laughs> physicians. She was a metaphysician, that we call it that well, that way, and spiritual teacher. Katie was deeply involved in exploring the intercessions of health, spirituality, and personal empowerment. She said it's, uh, they, you know, they work together, health, spirituality, personal empowerment, and the book, especially, uh, she has other books, but this one, um, it um, focuses on the principles of, again, personal responsibility, spiritual healing, and the power of thought in shaping one's life experience or one's life experiences. The power of thought she brought that, which actually became the third principle of unity, which is thoughts held in mind produce after their own kind. So if you have thoughts of love and blessing people and doing your inner work, your life will uh, naturally uh, you will experience in that way. Katie's teachings emphasize the idea that each individual has a divine nature. That sounds familiar? <laughs> At the, and it, in a time when we were, everybody thought that you were, we were sinners and that uh, we were born with the original sin. I even forgot that. <laughs> I don't even remember <laughs> anymore. Yeah. So she came with the idea, no, we are born with the, uh, with the original blessing. Because we are, we are coming, we are all from divinity. So she was talking about all these, these things. And she also taught that Everybody can access. I, mean, I have some. Everybody can access inner wisdom and healing through spiritual understanding, with spiritual alignment and positive thinking. So we can be together and we can be reading a wonderful book, but then you go, we go through life cursing everybody. And, and <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we don't do anything. It's truth. So the, the, the idea is to really uh, embody those teachings and to be active, proactive into, into what we learn, what we read, when we pray. So, uh, a ver, my husband is trying to tell me fifth something. Principle. The fifth principle, oh, thank you, yes. The fifth principle, I call it walk the talk. <laughs> So the fifth principle of unity is that it's, it's not enough just to know these things. What matters is to put them in practice. That's what matters. 
to put it in practice. Um, Emily Cady, Cady advocated for practical spirituality, encouraging readers to apply spiritual principles in everyday life, emphasizing self-reliance, divine connection, and an, an understanding that God is an indwelling presence rather than a distant entity. Because they, that was a time where still, where everybody, oh, God is in heaven. I remember studying that in, in, my, in my school. I went to a Jesuit school. And it was a little bit weird when the nuns and the priests were talking about that entity over there. And I was like, oh. So no, no, no. Emily Cady was hoping, talking about all these things. Again, the book explores metaphysical principles and Christian mysticism, if some of you want to buy the book, know that it's very simple, it's very basic, but it really goes to the point. Actually, um, <clears throat> we have a friend, Jack and I, Reverend James Trapp, which is a former CEO of, of Unity Movement, and he, he says that the first thing, thing he does every year is to go apart and to read the book, so to prepare him for the rest of the year. So he does that. Um, many spiritual teachers, actually, spiritual leaders, they hold Katie's work in high regard, seeing Katie's teachings as aligned with their own ideas of the divinity within each ev every individual divinity everywhere no separations no as one and of course <clears throat> unity uses and comes from emily Cady, the power of affirmative prayer that's basic unity we are going to touch that some people don't know i have had people asking me what is affirmative prayer um for example, again, many leaders are, uh, are really uh, about aligned with the teachings of Emily Cady, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, who founded Unity in the, in the late 19th century, Eric Butterworth, which was a prominent Unity minister and author, Michael Beckwith, a spiritual leader in the New Thought on Science of Mind movement, and he was the founder of Agape International Spiritual Center. He uses uh, lessons in truth. Deepa Chopra has spoken uh, about lessons in truth and is, uh, as a transformative text, that's how we called it. Even Marianne Williamson's discussions on forgiveness the nature of divine love and healing the mind are reminiscent, is that correct, that word, <laughs> of the principles of Katie uh, articulated. So it's, it's not unusual. And I personally uh, <clears throat> value the book's simplicity in explaining profound spiritual truth. It's the simplicity that is you, you, it's really reading a simple book. It talks about the importance of understanding, again, one divine, one's divine nature, and empowers individuals to take charge of their spiritual development through prayer and, and affirmation is not about, oh, what that person is going to teach me, what can I, no. You take responsibility for your own spiritual development. That's the idea. I like that in the, actually, in the book, it talks about the, the, the interconnectedness of all 
beings. I am amazed at how at that time she was so open, talking about all that and the power of belief and self empowerment through spiritual realization. So she was publicly in the late 1800 talking about forgiveness, about the nature of divine love, again, divine identity, all these things, uh, the power of thought for healing the mind and the body. So we are going to have fun this week because we are not only going to talk about these spiritual themes, but are also putting them into practice. And I'm going to tell you, those of you who are in your house, if you could, could have a notebook and a pencil, I would love to do some exercises, including homework, if you feel like doing homework, why not? Nobody's going to check your homework because this is for you. This is really uh, for you. Um, and here, yes, we have some uh, papers and pens. Now, the key principles or a summary that makes Lessons in Truth a beloved resource for many spiritual communities in a nutshell. I'm going to tell you like one, two, three, four, five, so the first thing, it uses affirmation and denial. But hey, listen, Katie encourages, because affirmations and denials have been misunderstood or misin misinterpreted. She encourages the use of denials to release limiting beliefs or negativity. It's not that we are denying that we feel in some way. No, no, no. This is important, an important difference. Is to deny that something external can hurt me. Because I'm the one who allows what I'm going to accept, or I'm just going to say, nope, I don't need this. So that's what denial. Denial is that you have, it's not. Like, listen, it's not, oh, I, I have this headache. No, no, but this headache doesn't exist. No, 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 I don't have this headache. It's not denying, oh, I feel sad. Oh, no, no, this sadness. No, it's acknowledging whatever you are going through, but knowing that those things have no power over you. Okay? Or... Uh, or again, uh, you, denials also is a way of releasing limiting beliefs. Like, you know what? I don't need this in my life. I have been believing this for a while, but I don't need this anymore. I don't need to act this way. I don't need... I'm, I'm laughing because yesterday I was pretty harsh in somebody. No! And, this, and I was like, how interesting. I can say the same thing without being... without that... Oh! And then I say, where that comes from? Ah, because I was a math teacher for junior high school in the Bronx, in New York. I was like a general. So three years, you sit down now. I mean, really tough. But these children, it worked because they knew I cared for them. I was teaching them. I was really asking them, you have to do your homework. If no, you cannot come to this classroom. So, but I was really strong and firm. I said, you know what? I'm not a math teacher in a junior high school anymore. <laughs> I don't need to talk that way. So that's yay. what... <laughs> My husband is here like, yay! <laughs> That's what denial is. I don't need this anymore. And then 
you affirm or you use affirmation to assert to own spiritual truth. You see, that's denial and affirmation. The second point is divine identity or inner divinity, call it whatever you want. Katie's emphasizes our inherent divinity, beloved ones. We are divine. The idea that God resides within each of us. Everywhere, unity calls it a spark of divinity that we all have. That's the second principle of unity. We all have the spark of divinity. You can call it whatever, yeah. inherent divinity, and uh, the idea that God resides within each of us. It teaches that each person has a divine essence and has the ability to live in harmony with God's will by recognizing and cultivating this inner divinity. Is recognizing it, accepting it, knowing that is the truth of who you are, of who I am. The third principle, again, which is the, the, the third principle of unity, is the power of thought. Emily Cady emphasizes especially the creative power of thought and belief to create our own life. We were going to talk about all those things during the, the, the week. The number four is health and healing. This book focuses on spiritual healing and the mind, a, a spiritual healing and healing of the mind-body connection. You see, because what we held in our thoughts, held in mind, uh, affect us, affect our, our bodies too. It teaches that understanding spiritual truth can lead to physical and emotional healing. Just understanding and living it. And finally, the number five, uh, teaching or number fifth, the teaching is practical spirituality. She uses clear, approachable language and real world advice for applying spiritual principles to everyday life. It's interesting. So, from the last, from the first to the last word, the invitation, I, 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 the invitation is to see ourselves and all life in a kinder and gentle, gentler way. That's the idea. To look at our world with appreciation for the transformation and perfection that is the process of life. This process of life, she uses this and I'm, I, I want to read this. Like a river, it flows, let me see if I can read this. Process of life, like a river, flows in a gentle rhythm. And when boulders, stones, or storms enter and disturb its waters, causing, causing ripples, foam, and froth, eventually these earthy elements settle and the rhythm a, a flow them away, bringing bringing them uh, once again into its healing waters. So spiritual growth is a process of own learning, own 
conceptualizing, de-literalizing our thinking and concepts. That's the process. So the homework for today <laughs> is, I'm going to find it, and she, we, we will talk about revelations and all the things. Okay, homework. Let me find homework here. To commit, that's number one. To daily meditations. That's, I think everybody here, we are all committed to that. A reminder. Daily meditation. Number two, uh, I'm, I would like you to write some personal reflection statements because this is about reflection. Okay, and those of you at home in your house have paper. Um, so what I'm going to do is I will give you the beginning of a sentence and you will fill in the blank. For example, I'm going to give you an example. I feel God, and I'm using the word God, listen, you can use divine presence, you can use universe, you can use the Christ within, the Buddha, whatever God means to you, okay? Interconnectedness. I'm going to use God to make a scene. I feel God as love when, and you feel in. I, I wrote, I feel God, and then you think, or you take a deep breath, allow, allow the answer to come through you. Don't push anything. You can do, I feel God as love, and I, I wrote, when I feel its tender presence in my own heart. Okay? It's tender. We can call it she, or he, his, or her. It, I feel God as love, and then fill in the blank. Okay, and now I'm going to give you um, homework. Number two, and I'm going just to read it because time is over. So write it down, and then in a moment of meditation, number two, I experience God as wisdom when... Number three, I experience God as power when blank. I experience God, that's number four, as creative cause when... Number five, I experience God as principle when blank so it's the same question it's just you know wisdom or power or creative cause or principle and finally I experience God as father mother when so beloved ones I intend to do some exploring of our inner world, some exercises. Remember tomorrow, bring a pen or a notebook to the sessions. Tomorrow, we are going to explore the concept, concept of bondage or liberty and how we consciously and unconsciously apply those concepts in our daily life. So, Amen, 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 y punto! I'll see you tomorrow.